but I'm gonna take myself on a little tour I've been meaning to do. Um, there are seven different carvings that mark places of cultural significance to the Lekwungen people. Uh, and I decided today is the day to go see these sites and learn a little bit about them. So I'm gonna head out now on my own little bike tour and uh, find the first of those significant sites. See you there. Okay, I've spotted the first of the um, culturally significant sites that I have on my agenda. The hill here is called Mi Quan, which means warmed by the sun. The seaward slope was a popular place for rest and play. A game similar to field hockey called Coquillas was played here. At the bottom of the hill was a small palisaded village that was occupied intermittently from 1,000 until approximately 3,000 years ago. The settlement was here for defense during times of war, and it was also important for reef net fishing. The starchy bulbs of the wildflower, camas, were an important source gathered in this area. The hill here is also known as Beacon Hill Park. So here is site number one at the top of Beacon Hill. So at 2.5 meters high and weighing close to 1,000 pounds, the markers depict spindle whorls that are traditionally used by Coast Salish women to spin wool and were considered to be the foundation of a Coast Salish family. But here's a little friend I found, a peacock, an introduced species. He's definitely not indigenous to the region. There's a bunch more peacocks coming up the hill. There's a, I think one, that one at the back is a peahen. And then the peacock is in the front. I think the ark is gonna be quite jealous of me because look at all the wilderness I'm seeing today. First peacocks, now deer. It's a squirrel, big black squirrel. I think they are indigenous to this habitat. I think this is where they live. But I know there are some introduced squirrels here that are really big and fat. The one that lives in my backyard. This one's quite elusive. It's getting away from me. I'm gonna see if I can get a better look at him. Oh, there he is. Jet black. All right, I've arrived at the next location. I haven't spotted the spindle whorl yet, but we are now at uh, the RBC Museum, Royal British Columbia Museum. And there are a lot of totem poles and a long house. And somewhere around here is, is the spindle whorl. So I will keep looking and update you when I find it. Spotted another interesting site, native plant gardens. These gardens, first planted in 1968, hold British Columbia's largest and most diverse collection of plants native to the province. Apparently there's over 400 species and many of these plants were used by the first peoples throughout the province for food, medicine and clothing. And so here's just a few of them. I think Truth and Reconciliation Day is a hard one to figure out how to recognize. I hesitate to say the word celebrate because like Remembrance Day, it's one of those days we need to stop and pause and be mindful and thoughtful about our activities that day and that we make sure that we open space and time for us to think about the reason we have this day. Um, and for me, I think we can recognize obviously on Truth and Reconciliation Day the so many losses that the Indigenous people have had it due to residential schools. But I also think it's important to, uh, you know, celebrate the fact, the resiliency, the fact that they, they did survive despite all of the government's efforts, all of the church's efforts, they did survive. They're prospering and it's our job as allies to do what we can to continue to support that resiliency. I think for everyone it's a day to stop and pause and think about that resource, that most precious of resources that we often neglect to think about and that is those people around us that hold us up, that love us, that keep us uh, grounded and um, that was the precious resource that was taken away from all of those children as they had to go away to these schools. So um, I think it's important that we make time for our families on this special day as well and recognize how 
fortunate you are when you are in a situation where you have people around you that love you and support you, whether it is your actual, you know, relations, your blood relations, or just people that know you truly and deeply and support you. So I'm hoping everyone is having time with their families to do just that on this day. We are at the Spindle World in front of the RBC Museum. This is here because the Lekwungen people have loaned many cultural objects from this area to the museum so that the traditions can be shared as we share the land. So some of these objects are on display inside and so marking this as a significant site to learn about the culture, visit the museum and you'll have an opportunity to learn about these items. So I'm at Laurel Point now. There's the hotel on my right hand side. That location was important because it marks a 19th century First Nations burial ground and small burial shelters with different carved mortuary figures including human figures were placed in front of the graves and stood here until the 1850s. So I'm on a hunt to find the spot at Laurel Point, but I haven't found it yet. And I came in to talk to the hotel and find out whether they knew anything about it. And they said, maybe it's been moved because there was some groundwork being done a little while back. So I'm gonna head back out and have a look, but I came into the hotel and saw there is some lovely art displayed here from various uh, different indigenous artists. Well, I've done a pretty thorough scouring of Laurel Point grounds for the Laurel Point Spindle World, but I have been unsuccessful. So I will, I guess, have to report this back to the Songhees people, <laughs> whose website I found this information on. But this site right here seems like it'd be perfect. My guess is maybe it was here and it got moved. It's a beautiful walk along here. I'm underneath the trees. Gorgeous day, really. I mean, it's not exactly always sunny, but it's very beautiful, especially in this kind of a region. Not a bad day to have off and to go reconnect with some of the history around here. Right now, I'm heading down the lower causeway, and there is supposed to be another um, spindle whirl down here. So, we'll have a look, see if we can find it. Hopefully, we have more luck than we did at Laurel Point. This is actually an area where the, the First Nations Artists Causeway Gallery is often set up. So, still no luck, but it dawned on me that it's not so much the significance of actually seeing the spindle whirls as it is about learning the significance of these spots that I'm visiting. So the lower causeway here is known in, I guess, the, the Lekwungen language, Sanchathan, as Wulsalkam, Place of Mud. Marked, it marked wide tidal mud flats and some of the best clam beds on the coast. These flats were buried when the area was filled in to construct the Empress Hotel. This place was also one end of the canoe portage. The portage could be used to avoid the harbor entrance during heavy seas by cutting through some from the eastern side of what is now Ross Bay Cemetery. Along the route, arrowheads and other stone tools are still found, reminding us that the lowlands were rich for hunting. When housing developments began, the lower elevations were left for market gardens and nurseries until after the Second World War. But this is the stop at what was Fort Victoria, the spindle whirl here, is to commemorate where the first uh, Fort Camosun was uh, built. And this was built here by the Lekwungen men and women in exchange for trade goods. And this marked a drastic change in traditional ways and traditional sustainable land use. 
the large forested area was destroyed to raise the fort. And here it is. And oh, there's a little special stone there. I think I'll take that back for my class. Put it on our peace table. So here we are standing on the site of Fort Victoria. Looks a little bit different now than it probably did back then. Here I am at the next site. Second to last site of Spindle Worlds. This one's at the Songhees Walkway here in downtown Victoria. And this one is to mark where uh, traditionally it was called Palut Palutsus, which means cradle board. And I guess this is a, traditionally once infants had learned to walk, their cradles were placed at this sacred headland because of the spiritual power of the water here. More recently, there was a settlement here and subsequently an Indian reserve that traded with the fort on the opposite shore. This place is also known as Honghees Point. So I'm finally arriving at the last stop on the Spindle World Tour, heading into Centennial Park, where hopefully I will find the last of the Spindle Worlds. So still no sign of the Spindle World, but I did find the site where I guess we had a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald that has been removed as uh, we try to figure out how to move forward and reconcile this past. It's Sir John A. Macdonald was uh, a first Prime Minister of Canada, but he was also the leader of violence against Indigenous people. So in the meantime, until we sort of figure out how to move forward, it has been removed for safekeeping. All right, well, walking along, I finally did find the Spindle World. It's a little bit orphaned from City Hall. It's actually across the street from City Hall on the corner there. The last of the Spindle World on my tour. Signs of the Lekwangen. So this Spindle World is to recognize that this land used to be used for harvesting food, believe it or not. And it was known as Squitsutsmi Ilch, which literally means bitter cherry tree. Here there were willow lined very rich creeks and meadows that meandered down to the ocean and paths made by bark harvesters bordered the waterways. I had to stop and film this because what's more inspiring than a double rainbow? There's a double rainbow happening over the city of Victoria right now. And not only that, but it's like a complete rainbow. Amazing. That's pretty inspirational. See, that's a pretty positive note to end on. So hopefully everyone was able to spend it today doing something to bring them some knowledge and understanding about truth and reconciliation and I've certainly been proud to see how many orange shirts were out today on my adventure. <laughs>